When Michael Shen was getting his MSW at UC Irvine, he was also part of the Anteaters World Championship telephone team. And I'm talking about telephone the game, where each person whispers a message to the next, and usually doesn't make any sense at the end. Hmm. Turns out that's kind of like a mesh network. So Michael has taken those talents to Cyprus, a part of Infinian Technologies Group, where he's making Bluetooth mesh networking as world class as his college telephone team. Welcome to Tech Chats, Michael. Now let's start off with the basics. What is Bluetooth mesh, and how does it work? Okay, so Bluetooth mesh is different than the traditional Bluetooth definition, right? For people who are familiar with uh, Bluetooth, profiles is like a different application, like the A2DP profiles for audio. For mesh, it's different. So it has a profile, and on top of that, it's combined with the models and the properties. So models is similar to like a light switch or dimmer, and the properties is the value that's being stored into those models. So if everybody remember when the BLE first released for the home automation, it's a one-to-one -one or one-to-many, right? The example, like you have a mobile phone, connect to your light switch to turn on, turn off the lights. When you are doing a one-to-one -one or one-to-many, it's a star topology. So you're getting limited distance. For example, if you have a class two device or class one device, you're limited to about 10 feet, but with mesh, uh, it's a many-to-many -many combination. So one key thing about many-to-many -many is uh, you're not limited to the distance. There's no such a limit because each of the nodes can forward the message to the next node. So you don't have a limit to your mesh network. So speaking about the technology itself, Bluetooth 6 redefined the whole software architecture for Bluetooth mesh. So if you look at the diagram here, the blue color is the typical BLE architecture. The green one is a new addition to the family. So the first one is a mesh model. So I mentioned earlier, mesh model is like a dimmer or a light switch, temperature sensor, those kind of things. It's being defined as a mesh model. Then there's a mesh core. So mesh core included uh, three different elements in there. There's a transport layer, there's a network layer, and then there's a barrier layer. For the transport layer, it further separated into the upper layer and the lower layer. So the upper transport layer is more focused on the encryption, decryption, and authentication to ensure the security for your mesh devices. And on the lower transport layer, it's mainly to deal with uh, the PDUs, right, your data. Some, sometimes if your data is too big, then the lower transport layer will help to segment it and then reassemble the packets. The other element is the network layer. Network layer is just typical the network layer to handle the transport message, handling all the protocols. And the last one is barrier layer. So this one is to deal with mesh uh, specific uh, protocols. It's between the nodes, different nodes. So it's a more of the mesh information. So I've mentioned about the nodes. For mesh, Bluetooth SIG defined four different nodes. So the, the proxy node, the relay nodes, the friend nodes, and the low power nodes. So what are those nodes? The first one is the proxy nodes. Proxy nodes is gonna convert the packet between the mesh network and the BLE GET network. The relay nodes, it will receive the packets and it will forward it to the rest of the nodes that it's been connected to. Almost all the mesh nodes can be configured as a relay nodes. And then the next one is a friend node. The only purpose for the friend node is connect to the low power nodes. So the friend node will send the periodic updates to the low power nodes. So what is a low power node? What it does is it will connect to the friend node on the predefined interval. So it can be a temperature sensor connect to the friend node because you don't need a constant information. So you will probably configure that to send the update every minute, every five minutes or every 10 minutes. So that's how the low power nodes work. So here you have a mobile device with uh, the app installed. So the first thing is, uh, for example, like you want to turn on the lights. Your phone will connect to the node N, 
M is configured as a proxy node, right? So now the proxy node N is part of your ne mesh network. So it will translate that information and forward it to the rest of the nodes as part of your mesh network. So for example, in this case, the node R received the packet. Nodes R is a relay node in this case. So the nodes R will forward that. Right, in this example, let me use node Q. So the packet forwarded to the node Q and the node Q then will forward to the rest of the nodes. In this case, the node P received the packet and the node P is a friend node. So it will connect to the low power nodes. We have a IJK is a low power nodes. Low power nodes in this case could be a sensor. So your mobile device connect to the node N Node N forwarded the packet to R, Q, P. Then on your predefined interval, the node P will forward the packets to node I, J, and K. That's how the Bluetooth mesh works. Okay, and with all that being said, why would someone want to use Bluetooth mesh over something like Zigbee or another type of mesh network? Okay, that's a very good question. Typically today, the most popular mesh technology, including the Zigbee and the Bluetooth. But Zigbee is not supported by your mobile devices. So if you want to connect, configure, provisioning a Zigbee light bulb, you won't be able to do that directly from your phone. So you will need a hub to be able to do that. So that's an additional cost. But Bluetooth mesh doesn't need that. So Bluetooth mesh is a native supported in all the mobile phones or even for your tablets. So it's easy, you know you have a technology there already. And it's a consumer friendly. And the mesh in general, there's no single point of failure. But for Zigbee, there's a single point of failure because if you don't have a hub, then you lose the connectivity to your Zigbee mesh network. But for Bluetooth, if you cannot connect to the node a, you can easily connect to node B through your mobile devices because it's been using a Bluetooth BLE as a standard. The last one, the key point is for Zigbee, there's a limitation for number of the nodes as part of your network. For Bluetooth mesh, you can go all the way up to 32,000 nodes because your, the, the max TTL time to live is 127 hops. So you can just keep extending your network up to 32,000 nodes. You mentioned the native support that Bluetooth enjoys, and you have some data to share that shows that, right? Right. So this uh, market data is released by Bluetooth SIG earlier this year. So you can see that for the Bluetooth in general, uh, the markets continue to grow uh, year over year. So the table next to it, the chart next to it, you can see that you know the mesh qualified devices has been doubled every six months. 6.2 billion projected Bluetooth device shipments in 2024. That's a lot. It is. It is. That's incredible. What types of applications will benefit the most from Bluetooth mesh? The first one is a smart industry. So before for the industry, there's no connectivity. So they're using a Bluetooth mesh to start connected all the features. And then the next one is a smart building. Smart building is also getting more and more popular. The first one is a lighting, and uh, also we're seeing uh, like a window shade. Everything it will be controlled through the BLE mesh network. And uh, another one is temperature sensor. So you can put all the temperature sensor throughout the buildings so that your air conditioning can be utilized the best for power saving and other things. The next one is a smart city. Smart city we're seeing could be beaconing, could be light control, could be many things, right? So a person in a central location is able to use the mesh to start controlling many, many devices like a street lights or even capture the update of, of all the meters reading, the sensors reading, all can be through the mesh network. And the smart home is the area that the most people are familiar with your lights, your switch, your window shade, your lock, door sensors, window sensors, temperature sensors. So those are all part of a smart home. The growth rate is pretty significant among all these areas. 
Now, what are some of the challenges that designers and developers are going to deal with when implementing Bluetooth Mesh? So battery powered devices like a sensor, you know, you don't want to wire the sensor throughout the house, right? So you want to be able to battery powered. For battery powered application, you need to have a very low power. Otherwise, you'll be changing your batteries like every week. So the next thing is uh, the hardware design. You know, for everything related to RF, they become a challenge, right? And also on top of that, there's a regulatory certification. It will all consume the energy and the time to do that. And also to be able to properly implement all the mesh, it will require extensive resources, particularly the firmware, the software, the testing. So those are all the challenges um, the, the engineers are facing. So what Cypress is offering today is we have a portfolio for all the pre-qualified modules. So you don't need to deal with the hardware design. You don't need to deal with a certification. Everything will be pre-certified. So you can just take the module and start using that. And on top of that, we have a complete SDK, easy to use, including the example code. And so let's talk about your solutions in a bit more detail and how they can make life easier for the designer and the developer. So Cypress, we're offering three key elements. So the first one, we're offering the hardware, either the silicon, the eval case, or module. And then we have a complete software SDK that provides you the example code. And then the last one is uh, the mobile app. So now you have the hardware, you have the software, but you need to be able to manage in that. You need to be able to provision in your devices. So we have a mobile app for testing, for evaluation. So the first one, I want to talk about the silicon. The first one is a 20706. So this one is a CM3 with a support up to 105 degrees. So if you have a light bulb, you will need to support the high temperature. So this chip actually supporting that. And it supports 10 dB TX output power. So that means it will have a longer distance for the reach, right? The good thing about that is uh, if you have a longer reach, that means you can have a less nodes for your whole complete mesh network. 20735 is our next generation of the 20706. One key point about 20735 is that it supports low power. If you have a sensor device, it will be running off the coin cell. 20735 will be one of your best choice. I want to jump into the uh, 20719 next. 20719 and the 20735 is the same family. It offers the same power consumption. But on top of that, 20719 has a bigger RAM and also including one megabyte flash. If real estate is very important for your design, you don't want to put an external flash or you don't have a space for that, you can go for 20719, which is everything integrated. Then I want to go back to the 20819 and the 20820. This is our latest, the greatest device. Both devices will have 256K byte flash included, and it will support the high temperature up to 125C. And also for the power consumption is even lower than the 20735. And the main difference, A19 is a 4 dBm TX output power. A20 supports up to 10 dBm TX output power. So I just kind of want to highlight it to your A19 because it's our latest chip in our family. So uh, you can see that uh, it's uh, using a 96 megahertz ARM Cortex M4 with a 176 K bytes of uh, SRAM, 256 K bytes of a flash. And then right now we have a two package we're offering for this device, uh, 62 pin BGA and 112 pin BGA. It really depends on your application. If you need uh, more GPIOs, then you can pick up the, the bigger package for that. Okay, and what about modules based on these different ICs? Basically, these are all the modules we're offering today. It's pre-certified, qualified, you can just go buy it. If the cost is most sensitive, then you can pick up the one from the most left. Then all the way to the most right is the highest devices that supports uh, extended range and the extended temperature. And what about the software? 
So right now we're offering a complete SDK with example code. Right? So you don't need to have a separate compiler or editor. So everything is all included. And this is available from Cypress website and you can just go there and download it. The next thing is you will need to have an app to be able to control everything. So Cypress, we're offering that as well. So we have a window-based application and Android-based application and the iOS. And we're also offering all the source code through GitHub. So you're able to get our application and then do the modification to fit your needs. And we have a few example code there that can help you to like turn on, turn off the lights to provisioning your devices. So the Windows app for advanced user, so this one can actually mimic your protocols. And you've got some eval kits that tie this all together too, right? So the evaluation kits, including the four boards based on 20A19. So the eval kit has everything included. It has a PIR motion sensor, you have a RGB LED, and there's a lot of headers that you can use for other sensor devices that you can connect back to these boards. So this is a complete eval kit to start your mesh evaluation. Earlier, we talked about one of the advantages that Bluetooth Mesh has is being able to connect directly to the mesh using your phone or other devices. You don't need a gateway. But what about remote connectivity? Right. So we mentioned about Bluetooth doesn't really need a gateway, right? Because your mobile devices can connect directly to all your mesh devices. But in some cases, if you're not at home or if you're not at work, you still want to be able to manage your devices through the cloud. So here, Cypress will offer you a solution, right? When you're away, you still be able to manage your mesh network remotely. Keep in mind, Cypress is the only company out there to support both the mesh solution as well as a internet gateway. So we're offering you a multiple solutions for the Bluetooth internet gateway. The first one is MCU plus Wi-Fi combo, that's a 43907. And you can attach that to any of the Bluetooth mesh enabled devices that we showed you earlier. So this will provide you a very quick solution to get into the market with a Bluetooth internet gateway. The second one, we have a software stack running off the Linux operating system to support some of the combo devices. So you can pick any of the MCU which supports Linux, and you can use our combo devices like a 4343X or 43438. The software stack, uh, BSA, is already ready, and you can just port it over. And then the last one is going to be a Cypress plus Cypress solution. We're going to use the PSOC 6 running either Embed or Free RTOS, along with our combo devices. What's the easiest way for a developer to get started using Bluetooth Mesh? So the first one is that you can purchase the Cypress uh, Bluetooth Mesh Evaluation Kit from either Cypress or Mauser. And the second one is a Modus Toolbox SDK that can be downloaded from Cypress website. And the third, we have a community forum. You can join that and you can ask all the questions you have. We have an application engineers on the community that can help you to answer all the questions you have. All right. Well, thank you, Michael, for joining us here on Tech Chats. And if you'd like to learn more about Cypress's Bluetooth mesh solutions, click the links in the description or visit mauser.com. And be sure to check back soon for the next episode of Tech Chats. Mm -hmm.